Microsoft Excel, sports science, sprinting, lifting, everything in between, low velocity, low power profiles. I'm super excited to dive into this tutorial to teach you how to make this right here. If you are a coach or an athlete and you have a knack for tech and data and training and putting it all together, this is going to be a fantastic tool in your toolbox. Yes, you're allowed to roll your eyes that I just said that. A fantastic tool in your toolbox to help you program and just lift and sprint more precisely. And I will explain for some context. My name is Matt Tometz. If you like my content, want to stay up to it, please hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, like the video. And if you want to share your biggest light bulb, stuff you want to see next, please comment that down below. So this is a low velocity, low power profile that we are going to make. Just a little teaser here is what the end result will be. Delete, sorry, not sorry. So there are two examples that I have. Sprinting, so velocity and power data from the 1080 sprint. And also from my VMAX Pro of a back squat. And these are the same but different, and I'll explain why. But first, we need some context on the equations that we will be using. So the velocity equation is a linear regression. So y equals mx plus b. So bring back those repressed memories from elementary school, or sorry, middle school and high school. So if I rewrite this, y equals mx plus b. So velocity, velocity you run at or lift at equals m. That's the slope of the line is generated times the load, whether that's bar or pounds in the bar or kg on the 1080 sprint plus B, that is the Y intercept, the max velocity that is also generated. So if I rewrite this, if I wanna calculate what weight to put on the bar or load to put on the 1080 sprint, because I know what velocity I wanna lift at, this is how you rearrange it. So you subtract B and you divide by M and it leaves you load. So there's things that we know about lifting, for example, that if I wanna lift near max strength, it's 0.3 meters per second. If I wanna get in that speed strength zone, it's one meter per second. Because we know that it's not the weight on the bar that drives the adaptation, we know that it is the speed of the bar. So we can work backwards if we have our regression in our equation to say, hey, this is the weight I wanna lift at. It's so facto, how much weight should I put on the bar? And same thing for lifting. I'm sorry, same thing for sprinting. So we speak in terms of velocity decrements. So max power is 50% speed. So the technical zone is 90% speed or 10% velocity reduction. So I'm going to, I'm going to be typing this out really fast, but basically if I want to know how much weight to put on the bar for a certain speed. So if I want to lift at 0.3 meters per second, I type in 0.3 minus B divided by M. Or if I want to be at 10% velocity reduction, I take 90% of my B, which is my best velocity, 90% of my best velocity minus B divided by M equals how much weight to put on it. And, and you'll see this in a minute. And then our power equation is a second order polynomial. So A squared plus B times X plus C. And max power, the top of this parabola is negative B divided by 2A. So just some context and let's get into it. So first we have to select our data that we want to put in a graph. So highlight, so this is for sprinting. And this is important because this is organized horizontally and this is organized vertically. And there is an important difference between the two. So insert scatter plot or just line, select, okay? Because this has these two as the data points, but our horizontal, we want to make the kilograms because the X axis is load. So I'm gonna highlight that. So see how that pops up right there. Okay. So now I want to change chart type because I want power to be on the other axis. Secondary axis and then make both of these scroll down, both of these scatters. Okay. So now we have this looking thing it's starting to look a little better. So let's just make it bold. Let's increase the size. This is just to, to make it look pretty. I'm gonna change this. Let's say LVP versus LPP, load velocity profile versus load power profile. Let's add our trend lines. So trend line, 
And why you have to highlight this, like including the names of it, is because it'll just make it a lot easier because it already pops up right there on the graph. Chart design, add chart element, trend line, linear. And I want linear for velocity. Perfect. There it is. Boom. Insert trend line, more trend line options because polynomial doesn't pop up right there. But for power now. So now this, this uh, menu on the right will pop up and hit second order polynomial. Boom. Look at that. Scroll down, display equation on chart, display R squared value on chart. You can move that out of the way. And now if you click on the linear line, linear right here, display equation, display R squared. Okay, we can get rid of that. So now let's make this a little bigger. We can make this a little bigger. And we can just rearrange this so it looks a little prettier. And we can change the axes. So if you double click on the X axis, I only want to go from zero to 25 because 24 is the most kilograms that I used. And then why is this going to negative one? I don't know why. So I'm just going to change this to zero to 24. Okay, zero to 24. My velocity, the lowest velocity I had was 368. So I'm just going to change this to three. And you can see how it auto adjusts right there. And once you get one pretty, it's pretty easy to get the rest. And my lowest power output was 480. So I'm just going to change this one to 400. All right. So now our, our axes look a little better. I got some space for the equations. And lastly, primary vertical title, primary secondary vertical title, pro primary horizontal title. So just to give a little bit more context, load, this is kilograms in this example. The second Y axis is power in watts. And my primary vertical is velocity in meters per second. All right, so now we have this pretty graph and let's explain what we do now. So I have this already typed up right here. For my velocity, I have M, B, and R squared, just like right here. For my power, I have A, B, C, and R squared. So I'm just gonna retype right from the graph. So Y, the M is negative 0.1886, the B is 80357, and the R squared is 0.8978. For the power equation, this guy right here, I can get rid of this. The power equation, my A, negative 1.5855, my B, 76.751, my C is 260.56, and my R squared is 0.997. So the R squared is just how well does this regression or does this line fit the data points? Or how well does this equation fit these data points? And that's more just to know how good the profile was. Above 0.95 is usually pretty good. So now, how do we turn this into action? So we have our equations. So for lifting, sorry, for sprinting, like I said, velocity decrements. If I know what velocity I want to run at, I subtract B, divide by M, and that tells me how heavy to make the 1080 sprint. And this only works if you have technology that in one rep, it can do velocity and power. You can't like mix and match. It has to be the same rep. So I did four sprints. I guess I'll explain that at three, 10, 17, and 24 kilograms. And at the, these yardages, 35, 30, 25, 20. Okay. And then for each rep, it gave me the velocity and the power for the fastest five meters. So velocity decrement, 10% velocity decrement is 90% of my speed. So B, the y-intercept, is my max velocity because when load is zero, then M cancels out and that just gives me B. So equals the velocity I want to run at, parenthesis, parenthesis, one minus 10%. So one minus 0.1 is 0.9, 90% times 
B. So 90% times my best velocity, my predicted max velocity. So that's going to give me the velocity I want to run at 0.9 times best velocity minus B again, divided by M. And I'm just clicking on the cells of what these things are. Oh, I need another parenthesis. One, two, oh, one more. All right, 4.3. So one minus the, the velocity decrement times my speed minus B divided by M. So I'm just doing all of that from this right here, the load to put on the 1080 sprint. So now what's nice about Excel is I make this equation once, and then all I have to do is just put some money signs on it, which keeps the cells the same. So the first thing L5, I want this blue cell to move over, but I don't want it to move downwards. So if I hit F4, F4, there's no money sign in front of the L, which means the L can change, but there is a money sign in front of the five, which means the five will always stay the same. Okay. Next, my B. So I always want the I to stay the same, but I want this to move down. So F4, 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 I in front of that, sorry, money sign in front of the I, but not the seven. So the seven can go down, but the I will stay the same. I'm going to do that again for the other I seven and the H7, the M is the same thing. I want the seven, the seven to change, but I want the H to stay the same. So now drag this across and it already calculates everything else. So my velocity decrement changed from 10 to 25, but these numbers stayed the same. Same thing here. My velocity reduction is now 50%. So if we look at this, 1 minus 50% is 0.5. 0 0.5 0 .5 times my best speed is half. So that's the velocity I want to run at. Half of my best speed is 50% V deck. Minus B divided by M. Boom, easy enough. Now here, so now this is the, the fast part. This is the, the, the plug and chug. So I did the same protocols. So I'm going to drag this down. So notice how the purple stays the same, but I can drag the velocity and the power. Okay. And look, this just auto updated automatically. So this was the first one and look at the numbers change. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is retype those numbers. Negative 0.1787, 8.0251. Four, eight. Next, negative 1.6202, 80.095, and 0.9963. So I just retyped those equations into my slots, right? MBR squared, ABCR squared. And with this equation, I can just boom, copy, paste, and see how this stayed the same, but this moved down because of the money signs. Okay. So the purple and the red moved down, but the blue stayed the same. So now I guess why we're doing load velocity versus load power. So max power is negative B. So this B now, cause it's the power equation, negative B divided by two A. So I'm going to do parenthesis negative B and you have to click the one on the power equation, right? This is, I'll just, Copy and paste this again. Velocity, power, velocity, power. Okay. So equals parenthesis minus B parenthesis divided by parenthesis two times A. So 50% velocity reduction says I should run at 21.3 kilograms, but max power based on the power equation says I should run at 24.2 kilograms. So the point of doing this is not to discredit 50% VDEC, but just to say, if I'm running at max power, am I actually doing it? If you have the ability to measure power and velocity. So now I can just copy and paste that formula and it moves down. 
And I'm not money signing this because I'm not moving this equation left and right. I'm just moving it down. So this one was a little bit closer, 22.5 to 24.7. So now I have one more athlete. And so this was me both times. So that's why these numbers are pretty similar, but let's see some different numbers. So I'm gonna drag this down. Notice how the three, 10, 17, and 24 stay the same, but I can move this down. And sometimes when it auto updates, it does make it a little messy. So you'll just have to tweak as you go. All right, I'm, I'm just gonna retype this. Negative 0.142, 8.592. Point nine oh four, okay. Negative point five four four. Fifty point oh five eight. One four one dot four two and point nine nine eight. And now all I have to do, select these four equations, and boom, it auto updates right there. Okay. So here's something that's interesting to put out. The horizontal organization is important if you have the same protocols every time. So this athlete actually ran at, they ran it because these numbers are extremely high, but this athlete actually ran at one, five, 10, and 15. But see how easy that is? It, it auto updates once you have the cells that it pulls from. So this graph is always gonna pull from these cells right here. And it's always gonna pull from those cells right there and you can move these around. But for the sake of this, we'll do seven, 10, sorry, three, 10, 17, and 24, okay? So if you have a set protocol, so for example, we have way more at one, five, 10, and 15. That's why you would do this horizontal organization if the protocol stay the same. And then you make these equations and then you can just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. So next let's do our back squats, okay? So I'm going to select these, insert, insert. Let's do a 2D line because I'm gonna have to change this again. All right, so let's do it the same as before, where we only select velocity and power, insert line graph, but now select data. Let's select our X axis, the actual loads, okay? Oh, so let's select those loads, but not select the thing that actually says load just the pounds. Okay, boom, look at that. So I'm gonna go through this relatively quick. So I'm gonna do the same thing, just making this pretty. Chart design, change chart type. Combo, I want power on the secondary axis. I'm gonna make both of these scatter plots. And if I'm going quick, uh, you can rewatch the, when I did this for the, the 1080 sprint. All right, add chart element, trend line, linear for velocity, insert trend line, more trend line options for power, polynomial, display equation R squared, select my linear, display equation R squared. I'll just move these over, make everything bold, make everything bigger. A little bit too big, actually. Change my chart title. Let's say back squat LVP versus LPP, low velocity power, low velocity profile versus low power profile. Chart design, chart element, insert primary vertical title, sorry, primary horizontal, primary vertical, and secondary vertical. So my primary vertical is Velo meters per second. My secondary vertical is power in watts. My X axis is load, and this is pounds now, load LB. And I can just clean this up. So for this one, for example, I went 135 to 245. So let's just go like 
So double click the X axis, axis options. Let's go like 100 to like 250. No, let's go like 275. All right, just to make, make this a little cleaner. The lowest velocity I hit was 0.55. So double click my Y axis, axis options. So let's make our bottom like 0.5 just to make a little bit less white space. And then for the power, the lowest power I had was 633. So let's make the bottom like just like 600. Boom. All right. So, and then when it auto updates, it's nice, but it's also not nice when it makes it ugly. So I'm just going to move these equations around so I can see them. Boom. And there you go. There is your graph. All right. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to retype this velocity mbr squared power abcr squared. Okay. So velocity negative 0 0.0038, 1.4845, and my r squared is 0 0.9695. Power equation negative 0 0.0326, 21.17. 127 and negative, this is important, negative 393.38. My R score is 0 0.8578. So not, not that good a profile, to be honest, but the next one is a little better. And this was inspired, I guess I didn't say this earlier. This was inspired by Matt Ray talking about max power for lifting. And that's about 63% of your max. And that inspired me to say, oh, well, if we can do a load power profile, well, are we actually training the power that we say we are? So this is why you would do this. And this is, a, this is a, a little bit more of turning into action, okay? So here's my equations. So first, let's calculate our projected max. So let's say 0.3 meters per second, because if we go back over here, 0.3 is absolute strength-ish. So not perfect, but so if I know I want to lift at 0.3 meters per second, 0.3 minus B divided by M is how many pounds, okay? So equals parenthesis 0.3 minus m divided by or sorry minus b minus b and parenthesis divided by m so my projected 0.3 meters per second is 31 point uh 31 point seven three three eleven point seven pounds all right so now i want to know what my velocity is for my projected max power, okay? So I'll do that right here. Remember, it's negative B, parenthesis, negative B, divided by 2A. All right, so this is saying my pounds lifted for max power is 186 pounds. So now I want to know, well, what bar speed would that be? So if we go back here, bar speed equals M times load plus B. So now I know what my X is, 186. So equals M times 186, parenthesis, plus B. Y equals MX plus B. Velocity equals M times load plus B. So I should be lifting at 0.78 meters per second to lift at max power based on this profile. And last, what I just like doing, 186 divided by 311. So that is approximately 60% of my max, my predicted max at 0.3. So that's how you would turn this into action based on the load velocity and the load power to say max power is 186 pounds. What bar speed is that based on the velocity relationship? So here's what's important about organizing this vertically. So remember, I can drag this down. That stays there, but this will move vertically. So if your protocols or if your loads will change every time, I think I just hit four by three or four by two with this, just based on what, what I was kind of feeling. So the pounds will probably change every time because you get stronger over time. So relatively the weights will go up. So that's why you would organize this vertically, but you organize this one horizontally if your protocols for profiling stay the same, if you see that right there.
the kgs. Okay, so I drag this down, and the equation already auto updated. So all I'm going to do is retype these equations: negative point zero zero four four, one point six six eight nine, point nine nine one three, power. Up, oh, right here. Better profile: point nine seven. Negative point oh two seven six. Point nine point six three two five minus thirty six point eight three point nine seven four six. And now with these equations, and because these are all their own equations, I'm not going to be dragging these left or right. I'm just going to be copying and pasting. I don't have to money sign anything. And these auto change, right? Because I'm not dragging this sideways like I did on these guys. I'm just straight up just going one change at a time. So my predicted max is about the same. But my predicted power, max power, negative B over 2A, is a little bit less weight, which means that the bar speed is actually going to be a little higher based on this profile, which makes sense. Less weight, more speed. And that's about 56% of my max. So... That is everything I have, but let me just wrap up. So once you have, once you have your graph, all you got to do is just drag and drop the actual data points, retype the equations, make these equations once, and then just copy paste. And same thing over here, drag and drop, retype the formulas, make these once. All you got to do is drag, oh, drag, drop retype and then copy paste so that's how you turn load velocity and load power into action so you use the power negative b over 2a to find out what max power actually is and then you use that and work backwards into the velocity because that incorporates the actual load that is the load so the pounds, the kilograms on a tiny sprint, that's why you have to put both of these together because this equation helps tie it into action because it has that pound kilogram component to it. So hope that helps. This stuff is fantastic. I'm glad we share this mutual interest. Happy excelling in sports science.